What surgery was like in ancient Egypt? Surgical procedures have been found in ancient Egypt dating back to the Old Kingdom, circa 2613 to 2181 BCE. The Edwin Smith Papyrus, which dates to dynasties 16 to 17 of the Second Intermediate Period, circa 1600 to 1550 BCE, is the first complete textbook on trauma surgery. It contains anatomical observations and descriptions of surgical treatments for wounds and fractures. Ancient Egyptian medicine, which was so advanced for its time, included simple non-invasive surgeries, like stitching up wounds with sutures made from animal intestines or plant fibers. But they also performed complex surgical procedures such as trepanation, a surgical invention in which a hole is drilled or scraped into the skull. Techniques were also established for dealing with tumors, fractures, and foreign bodies. It's often difficult to imagine what medical procedures were like in ancient times especially without the help of modern technology. But we have been able to glean some useful information from the ancient Egyptians, who left behind written records as well as surgical tools. And in today's video, we will see how these early surgeons tried to heal their patients' wounds and what they got right and wrong in the process. So let's start without wasting any time. Archaeologists have found evidence of surgery throughout the ancient world. You might be surprised to learn that humans were performing surgeries thousands of years before the invention of the scalpel. There is evidence that surgery was performed in ancient Egypt, Greece, Rome, and China, as well as India and Mesopotamia. In ancient Egypt, doctors would often perform operations for injuries caused by hunting or war wounds. One such example comes from a papyrus called Edwin Smith Papyrus, which contains descriptions of eight cases of head injury with detailed instructions on how each one should be treated, pictured below. The Egyptians had a good idea of anatomy because they mummified people. Mummification was a religious practice, so the Egyptians had a good idea of anatomy. They knew how to remove organs and preserve them separately from the body, which gave them insight into their structure and function. The Egyptians also knew how to preserve the body itself by removing all moisture with a natron salt, a mixture of sodium bicarbonate and sodium carbonate decahydrate used as an antacid or laxative today, and wrapping it in strips of linen or papyrus reeds, which would have been plentiful thanks to Egypt's marshy landscape. Finally, they would place a mask over the face of the mummy before sealing it shut in order to protect the head from decay. This practice would have given doctors access to facial features such as eye shape when examining mummies later on. The Egyptians were particularly fascinated by preserving brains after death because they believed that this organ held wisdom gained during one's lifetime. These brains are often found preserved inside jars called canopic jars. The heart was also thought important enough that some Egyptian pharaohs chose not only to have their bodies buried with them, but instead be interred somewhere else entirely, under mountains where no one would disturb them. They used tools like forceps and saws to perform surgery. The tools of surgery in ancient Egypt were made from various materials, including bone, copper, and bronze. Some of these surgical instruments have been found in tombs and include forceps, saws, scalpels, and needles that were used for incisions, ligatures to stop blood loss, tourniquets to compress arteries, pincers for removing foreign bodies or dead tissue, scissors for cutting sutures after surgery, clamps for holding tissues together during an operation and cauterizing them when necessary. Other tools include pestles used to grind herbal remedies, scoops for removing pus or blood from wounds, and bandages soaked with oil or honey before being applied over wounds. They knew how to perform trepanning and cauterization. The surgeon would remove the skull cap, called a trepanation, to expose the brain. Then he or she would use an instrument called an adz to cut it open and remove fluid buildup, cerebral fluid. This was done by drilling holes through the bone with a drill bit attached to a swivel handle that rotated in a circular motion. This was much easier than shaving away small pieces of bone because it could cut through thick layers quickly without causing splinters or fractures. Cauterization was another common procedure performed during surgery in ancient Egypt. It involves burning tissue with fire so as to not only close wounds, but also to stop bleeding from arteries. This method is still used today as one way of sterilizing surgical instruments before use on patients who are immune compromised due to chemotherapy treatments for cancer or other illnesses requiring immunosuppression. Once, doctors accidentally removed the wrong leg from a patient. 
One such surgeon, named Ankoff, accidentally removed a patient's leg while attempting to remove a tumor. After the unfortunate mishap, he was fined and banned from practicing medicine. Ankoff went on to become an architect instead of a surgeon, but continued to study medicine and eventually became a head priest at the Temple of Mutt in Karnak. Ankoff's story is just one example of how physicians were held accountable for their mistakes throughout history. In fact, there was often severe punishment for medical errors or even perceived medical errors. One doctor who failed to treat Pharaoh Ramses II during his final illness was put to death for overlooking the king's condition. Another physician who failed to treat King Tutankhamun received both a fine and banishment from Thebes after being accused of trying to poison him because he found no reason for his illness. During childbirth, a woman would hold another woman's hand. The most common method of childbirth in ancient Egypt was a natural birth. The woman would squat and push while a midwife or another woman would offer her hand in support and share the pain. This method was also used during surgery, as you saw above. Methods used to treat painful conditions during the operation The ancient Egyptians were known to have used a variety of methods to treat painful conditions during the operation. They may have used a mixture of honey, animal fat, and opium to coat the wound area. They also may have used a mixture of oil, honey, and turpentine for the same purpose. In addition, the ancients may have used an anesthetic made from extracts of poppy seeds or other plants that contain opium-like compounds. They probably used these drugs in conjunction with other painkillers such as alcohol or cannabis-based compounds. The ancient Egyptians are also thought to have used bloodletting as a means of relieving pain by allowing it to freely flow out of their bodies. This technique involved cutting open veins on either side of the body's neck or wrist and allowing them to bleed until they were nearly empty. Surgeons probably would not use these methods today because they are both painful and could cause infection if not done correctly. Ancient Egyptians had a specific set of diseases as well as sophisticated ways to treat them. They had a specific set of diseases as well as sophisticated ways to treat them. They knew what the symptoms were and they knew how to treat them. In fact, they may have even been able to cure some types of illnesses that we have yet to find cures for today. Surgeons in ancient Egypt seem to have worked in temples specializing in certain areas of medicine. In ancient Egypt, it was not uncommon for surgeons to work in temples specializing in certain areas of medicine. For example, there were separate temples dedicated to heart surgery and eye surgery. The practice of medicine was considered sacred and important enough that it required specialization. It was also passed down through generations as a family business, at least among the wealthier classes, which meant that there is a wealth of knowledge about things like skull fractures from surviving records. There was a high level of training and cultural prestige associated with surgeons and physicians. In ancient Egypt, the practice of surgery was not a common skill. Surgeons came from a specific culture and had high levels of training, which gave them great prestige among their peers. There were even special schools where surgeons could learn their trade, and if you wanted to become a surgeon or physician in ancient Egypt, this type of schooling was required. Surgeons were respected both as professionals and as healers because they had knowledge about how bodies worked and how they could be repaired when they were injured or diseased. With this level of understanding came skill. Doctors could use their knowledge to perform difficult surgeries that would save lives otherwise lost due to infection or injury. When someone needed help with an ailment, such as an infected wound on their face, called leprosy, doctors knew exactly what herbs should be used for treatment. These herbs were ground up into powders that would then be applied directly onto wounds for healing purposes. The Edwin Smith Papyrus is the first known complete textbook on trauma surgery. You probably weren't expecting to hear about ancient Egyptian medicine on your 10th grade history class, but if you're anything like me and were taught this on a school trip to the Metropolitan Museum of Art, then you may be familiar with the Edwin Smith Papyrus. The scroll is one of the oldest known surgical treatises in existence. It dates back to approximately 1600 BC and was translated into English by James Breasted in 1930. It contains 48 cases of trauma surgery performed by Egyptian doctors on wounded soldiers during the 15th century BC. The papyrus is named after an American Egyptologist who purchased it from an antiquities dealer in 1862. Its original owner was Dr. George Edwin Smith, who donated it to Boston's Museum of Fine Arts when he died in 1886. 
all these operations were performed using herbal medicine, magic, or spells and incantations. The ancient Egyptians had many types of treatments for different medical conditions. Some of them were based on herbs and natural remedies, some were based on magic and superstition, while others were performed using surgery. In the past, people would use supernatural means to heal themselves. They believed that certain illnesses or injuries were caused by demons or evil spirits and could not be cured by medicine or other means available at the time. The Egyptians also believed in magicians who could cast spells over their patients to cure them of any illness or injury they might have suffered. They used incantations and charms made out of wax figurines filled with healing materials such as honey or oil mixed with herbs like ginger root or cinnamon bark powder mixed with water, which they placed over the body parts affected by an illness, like a sore throat caused by colds and flu viruses, infecting our lungs when inhaled into our bodies when we breathe the air outside during winter months when temperatures drop below freezing point temperatures, making breathing difficult due to mucus buildup inside the lungs causing coughing fits so people wouldn't catch pneumonia when infected. Egyptian doctors knew more about surgery than most people believe. The ancient Egyptians are well known for their skill in medicine, and they were able to perform many surgeries without the use of any anesthesia. This included operations on the abdomen, nose and ears, as well as tooth extractions. The ancient Egyptians also used metal instruments during their surgical procedures, which meant that they could be reused over and over again. They also had some form of antiseptic solution that helped to prevent infections from occurring after surgery. While it's true that the ancient Egyptians did not have some of the modern tools we use today, such as x-rays or MRI machines, their knowledge about human anatomy was still extremely advanced for their time period. The Egyptians saw the human body as an assemblage of small parts, which they called members. Each part had its own function, and the whole body worked together to keep the person alive. The Egyptians believed that the heart was the center of life and emotion. They considered it to be a godlike organ that kept them alive. The Egyptians also believed in magic and spells, which they used to help with everyday tasks, such as hunting or fishing. They believed that if they performed certain rituals while performing these tasks, then their chances of success would be much higher. In summation, ancient Egyptian surgery was a relatively sophisticated field. It's doubtful that they would have had the same modern understanding of anatomy, but they still managed to perform complex surgeries successfully. And that's the end of the video. We hope you found this helpful. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment.